I started playing golf in October 2021, scoring 105 plus as a 34 handicap. Six to eight months later, I halved that to a 17 handicap with a best score of 85. No lessons, just lots of on-course management and mental changes that I still use to this day. Today's round, I'm going to go through these tips and tricks to hopefully help you in your game. Enjoy! Before the start of each round, I basically like to try and get some putting in. Because again, the easiest stroke to cut off your game is the free putt. So if you can get rid of free putting, you can essentially save yourself 18 strokes just on the greens. The two drills that I like to do the most uh, is like a ladder based drill and then just a couple of putting like three foot putts so we don't want to miss any of those. As you can see from those first putts I realise now the green is quite wet so I need to hit it a little bit harder, they're going quite slow. So straight away you can see the difference from just having a couple of putts. One thing in my game at the moment is the drive is not going strong. You don't want to start your round with a shot which is going to put you in a bad mood or put you in a bad position. It's a pretty open fairway down there as you can see. For the first shot I'm just going to go nice and simple, I'm going to hit my 6 iron and then I'll probably go to the hybrid a bit later on and then probably the driver at some point if I'm feeling confident. And the most important thing for us high handicappers when you're trying to get your handicap down is to assess where your bad shots are and where the bad places to be on the hole are. It's a fairly straight par 4, however to the left I can see a load of trees there and hazards so I've got way more room out to the right. If you see that little tree out to the right, I'm going to aim towards that one. Come short, I'll give myself like a 9 to 8 iron on uh, just to start things off. Um, because yeah, we don't want to have a blowout on the first hole. I forgot that I have started to slightly hook my irons. <laughs> Thankfully I did aim out to the right, but it has come to the left side of the fairway. Uh, hopefully we're not obstructed by the tree. But again, it just goes to show the importance of aiming in a place where it gives you a lot more room uh, to miss. Because I missed uh, a fair bit to the left in the end. But yeah, so we're just going to go through the main tips that I used to get my handicap down. Essentially half it in six months. Uh, so this will work for like most people, I believe. If you're new to golf and you're struggling to break 100 or if you're a little bit experienced and you're trying to break 90 uh, all these tips in this video are going to help you get to do that I did this all about having lessons so you don't have to have lessons but obviously if you have the ability to and you want to do so I'm sure that's going to benefit you this is again just for high handicappers how to half your handicap probably work for up until a certain point I reckon probably around that 15 mark you might need to seek a bit more further advice but uh, you know as you're starting out this is a great starting platform to see if you enjoy golf and want to continue playing. As you can see here, just left of the fairway, actually not obstructed by any trees. Uh, so we come here and we're right at the 150 meter mark. Pin is at the back. Uh, got a bit of wind with us, so obviously factor that in as well. And what we want to do is just aim for like the center of the green. Uh, don't worry about the pin too much. Let's just try and get on the green from here and avoid any hazards. So just having another look. Uh, so we don't want to miss off to the left because there's road there's also a tree here so we take that out we go slightly off to the right and then just to the right of the green there is also a bunker so we want to miss that bunker obviously because going in bunkers is obviously not going to help our score at all i'm not going to show you all the shots throughout the round but uh, let's just start with this first hole anyway and i'm probably going to make a couple of mistakes so be prepared for that as well you're going to make mistakes so we're no doubt going to learn how to uh, manage some of those as well uh, but yeah let's get into this i'm going to take probably a nine iron for me um, again, know your distances and go from there. If you normally come short, then go up a club. If you normally go long, then go down a club to play it safe. I've not played this course before, so I can see short of the green is fine. At the back, it looks like there is a field, so you don't want to go long. So again, we want to avoid the big penalties. If we can get up close to the green, great. Yeah, it's on the green, so you can't complain about that. Didn't hit it well. 
so the two things which are going through my mind there were I'm on a slight downhill so the ball's naturally going to come to the left I've already hit one to the left so I'm aiming slightly more to the right um, so you're going to manage your shots as you go uh, hopefully we'll start hitting the ball a bit better but uh, it's all about playing your bad shots to get your handicap down unfortunately it wasn't the prettiest of nine irons by all means uh, but it was low it did the flight path that I was kind of expecting uh, yeah it's on the green so if we can two putt here we get a par to start off for high handicappers like myself just because you're in a par position doesn't mean that you have to get a par so that brings me on to the next point which is managing expectations around the course uh, so here as you can see we now have ourselves a fairly good par opportunity um, but as like a high handicapper if you're in like the high 20s don't be going around and expecting to hit pars because pars are hard <laughs> like, even the pros don't hit pars obviously we're playing on probably slightly easier courses don't be disheartened with a bogey or even a double on some of the harder holes and don't be ashamed if you miss a par putt or miss a birdie putt if one comes along just keep your head up and uh, get through it uh, you can see on my other videos i've done a break how to break 100 and how to break 90 where i talk about that a bit in a bit more depth so feel free to go watch those so as we can see here we have a good line on showing what the green's like as well but yeah it's not too bad of a putt for our first one i will take this uh 10 times out of 10. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, go set the camera up and try and get a par. Lastly, just before I do that, the one thing that we don't want to do in these situations is get overexcited and end up hitting this well long. Although the birdie opportunity is on, obviously it'd be nice to get a birdie. Our main thing is just getting this to a comfortable second putt. If we can get that and eliminate the free putt, then we're going to score significantly better throughout the day. It's all about weight, all about pace. Uh, you hear a lot of people saying about lag putting. Can't stress how important the lag putting is for us higher handicappers and when you're starting golf. That moved a lot more than I was um, thinking it was going to. Uh, I'm going to take another little look at this one. Although I've taken the bank out now, so this should be pretty straight. And again, that's not the worst outcome. We'd like to be a little bit closer, but again, I'm not miles long. Got a fairly good chance of this one. Put a good confident, put a good confident stroke on it. Oh, and we just make it in. <laughs> as long as they roll in, it doesn't matter. So we start things off with a par which as you can see there, I've not really hit the best of shots. I've stayed in play, which is the main thing. And then, you know, I've looked at how I was hitting the ball, adjusted to it, and then I've two putt for par. And again, pars are gonna score you really well along the way. So again, we have another par four, fairly straight, but as you can see, you don't wanna miss to the left. So as we've seen on my last uh, shots, I was obviously hitting to the left. So I'm actually gonna aim far right. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of space out there. Aim for the space, and then if you miss, you're still in that space. Taking the hybrid just to warm that up. It's all about playing your shot shape. I know with the hybrid, I actually tend to draw slash hook it more. Aiming out to that tree, and it's come back in, and that should be in the center of the fairway. And so it's actually coming into my off season now, whereas obviously a lot of you guys are going into the on season. If you like this video and you want to see more tips from someone who's just come out of their season and learned a couple of things along the way, hit that subscribe button and like the video and I'll make some more. Because yeah, I enjoy helping people out. We're in the centre of the fairway. Perfect shot in. Cannot complain of how this round has started. Hopefully we'll have some trickier situations to manage, but right now I'm not going to complain when it's going good. Okay, so it's showing 117 metres to the front and 132 to the middle. Uh, so I'm going to take my pitching wedge at this one quick two tips have a device which tells you how far you are i'm currently just using my phone uh, sync with my watch and the other quick thing is know your distances uh, so i'm also hitting into wind so that makes me more comfortable to hit the pitching wedge because uh, it looks like i don't want to go long here still not hitting it that clean right now but hopefully that will change so again end up hitting that one a little bit to the right However, the distance looks pretty solid. Uh, I missed the bunker, probably wasn't in play. The worst case here was missing to the left, so didn't do that. All in all, pretty happy with the outcome. 
although it seemed I was disappointed because yeah I'm not exactly hitting them that well right now but we're only the second hole into the round so you know give yourself time to warm up into the round and the main thing is we just avoid having an absolute nightmare early on but if you do have a nightmare early on just remember 17 or 16 more holes to play plenty of time to correct your score so as you can see the distance is actually pretty good i was in line with the center of the green however i came off to the right but again this was a safe place to miss so we're happy with that outcome so now we're on to the short game side of things so we've not really seen one of these shots yet so far and this is probably what i would say is the most important part of uh for me anyway was dropping my handicap was being quite good from this kind of distance and being comfortable at it so yeah a lot of people kind of get to this situation and they don't know what to do they're real nervy uh and then they'll end up doing something where like i don't know, I don't know like, you end up just tapping it forward and having the exact same shot you've just had and you've gained a stroke and now you're even less confident but i'm going to tell you a couple of things now i think through which helps make it a lot easier and a lot more confident as well so the one thing is you want to have a look at the green and kind of read it like a putt so you want to know what the ball is going to do after it starts rolling it's obviously downhill uh looks like it could go a bit left and then also down to the right but the main thing is it goes downhill you know the greens are a little bit slow this morning because there's still a little bit of dew on it so it shouldn't roll out too much the main thing is we want to see where we want to land the ball instead of just aiming at the hole so if you aim at the pin, you can often land it at the pin, but then if you land it at the pin, unless you slam dunk it, which is very unlikely, uh, it's gonna end up rolling past. And on this green, rolling past is a bad situation. Uh, so we want to make sure we land just uh, on the front of the green. So for me, I'm just gonna go show you where I'm thinking of landing. Somewhere around here. So if I land it there, then hopefully it should kind of roll out where I'm expecting it, or we're going to learn some information about the course. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to use my 52 degree wedge. Uh, if you're not comfortable using like a wedge, something like that, you've got the other options of doing like a bump and run. My concern with the bump and run on this shot is if I go too far, it's going to go down and then it's going to go off the green at the back. Just going to do a little 52, land it where I am hoping to. Again, you can miss, but as long as you go into it with the good intentions of knowing roughly where you want to do, you're probably going to have a better outcome. <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, maybe I just need to make videos on talking how to go through each shot. So I had a landing spot in my head, didn't think, didn't overthink it, and then just got over the ball, hit my landing spot, and it ended up rolling and nearly actually went in, which would have been ridiculous. The things that I'm looking at when I'm lining up now, I don't want to go into, I don't want to go into anything too technical because I'm not good enough. That is me being 100% honest. I'm going to tell you the things that I do just to line up, which aren't based around like swing patterns or anything like that, because my swing is not good by all means, but it's good enough to help me get round and score pretty reasonably. What I like to do, so I've, A, I've found my landing spot, so just there. And then what I want to do is I just line up. You'll see like a lot of the, um, other tips and stuff tell you about this um, so you look at a line and then like bring it down to your ball and I look about maybe like that far in front of the thing so maybe like a foot in front find a bit of grass so for instance I've got this leaf here and then that's when I'm lining up to the ball and I'm putting my club face in line with that leaf and that is how I'm going to aim my shot so yeah, I landed it around there and then it rolled down here. I'm not sure if you're seeing this on the camera, uh, but yeah, that's how far we are from the hole. So again, just uh, ridiculous, really. Again, just a quick reminder, even though that putt is just there, if you're not a confident putter, or even if you are a confident putter, that putt counts exactly the same as a six foot, a uh, 10 foot putt, as it counts exactly the same as that chip shot, as the tee shot, still one stroke. So let's take our time, line up the ball and put it in. Let's not miss any of these simple ones. We don't want to give easy shots away on the course. So yeah, take your time, <laughs> line up. You would not expect to miss many of these, but you know, you can do. And again, line up, take your time and put it in.
Again, if you are missing those, then maybe get some putting practice on the go. Okay, so we're going on to hole three. Important to note. Hey, okay, stroke hole one is the hardest hole for a reason. So don't be too disheartened with, you know, adding two shots on. So instead of playing this as a par four, play it as a par six. Becomes a lot easier that way. But yeah, that, that's the whole point in the handicap system is, you know, you look at your scorecard, see how many shots you have. And on the harder holes, you're gonna have more shots. So you just wanna manage yourself, manage your way around the course. 363 meters, it's uphill. I think it's 200 meters to the top. So I need to really hit my hybrid to get there, but it does get a little bit narrow up there. So I'm wondering even maybe hitting my six iron to be safe. Unfortunately, my five iron snap, which would be my go-to club here. One thing for certain is I'm not gonna pull out my driver and just hit it as hard as I can, just to try and get distance. One of the main important things in lowering your score at the start is fairways and regulation or not even fairways and regulation just in play and not abstract so sometimes that can be in the rough but yeah if you can just get fairways and regulation so focus on your tee shot dispersion so meaning like where it's going like left and right so it's more central opposed to distance because at the end of the day for us higher handicappers distance is probably second to position uh, so if we hit our driver say 250 meters great but if it goes 250 meters off to the left on this hole you're going to be out of bounds. If you hit it 250 meters to the right, you're going to be obstructed by trees. So, you know, you need to play the course and play to your ability. By all means, if you hit 250 meters down the middle every single time with your driver, then do it. <laughs> but I, I don't do that. I'm going to aim off to the right again, because again, this club rarely misses off to the right. <laughs> right, okay, so that one didn't go too well. I ended up kind of topping it and it's gone absolutely nowhere. So now I'm in the same situation of, I should have gone with the six iron. You can see there's a bit of hesitation there. Uh, so let's just hit a six iron and see what I should have done. So that didn't go far, hanging into a wind and it's also uphill. So I'm not gonna expect too much distance. And again, I ended up doing the wrong shot and I've gone nowhere. Whereas there, I would have been, you know, up on the fairway with a good shot in. But, you know, you make bad decisions along the way, and that was our first one. But again, it's also being realistic with yourself and knowing where your strengths and your weaknesses are. So yeah, I am not kidding myself at all, and I know my weakest shot is my tee shot. I don't know why, obviously it's the one shot which you seem to be able to practice, but for whatever reason, when I get to a tee box, uh, I can't do the shots which I can do at the range. Uh, I don't know what it is, um, but yeah, that's what I have to deal with. Thankfully, I make it up with a fairly solid uh, shorter game and good course management, which hopefully you'll see today. This is probably honestly one of the most important points is After a bad shot forget about it Forget it erase it from your mind and now you have to plan on what is the best situation for you getting this ball to the hole uh, So for me, it's on a downhill. It's not the best light. So the ball's gonna be way above my feet So I'm gonna aim it up towards that tree I'm probably gonna hit a seven iron I'm just going to forget the distance. Positioning is way more important than distance here. So again, what a lot of people will do in this situation is you, you had a bad tee shot and they'll be like, right, okay, I need to make distance here. They take out their wood and they try and smack it as hard as they can and they end up putting themselves in exactly the same situation as before. Look how high above the, the ball is to my feet here. So it's not pretty, but it's up there. Could have been a lot worse. And you end up doing something like that. <laughs> Play to your ability. You're not a scratch golfer, you're a high handicapper. Let's manage our shots as we go around. So yeah, this is where we are now. <laughs> Annoyingly, like I said, my six iron, which is the shot I should have done, was in the center of the fairway. Okay, again, but we're going to put the bad shot out of our head. We're going to play a new shot from here. So it's our third shot. And again, it could have been worse. We could have been out of bounds. So again, just to put that into perspective. So although I'm, this is my third shot now, if I'd taken my driver and gone out of bounds, I'm free from the tee. So although I've done two not so great shots, I'm still in a much better position than going out of bounds. So again, it just shows the importance of trying to avoid the big hazards, like going in like a bunker, if you're not comfortable with bunkers, uh, going into like some water or going out of bounds. They're all gonna cost you dearly <laughs> later on Probably just gonna take my seven iron again and then have a wedge shot in that's probably my best option here 
into the wind. It, it does land downhill. Uh, I don't really know what's up there, uh, but yeah, I don't want to hit a tree. Don't want to hook it off to the left and go out of bounds. So I'm just going to take my seven iron. <laughs> and again, <laughs> it's not pretty. So you can see, I went back to back pars and I've had an absolute stinker, which is very common for us high handicappers. But you know, don't get your head down, lift your head up, move on, forget about it. At least we went forwards. <laughs> well, at least you can't say that I'm lying to you <laughs> about how I play. This is, you know, this is high handicap golf. This is the reality of it. You're not always gonna come out and fire consecutively well around the course. Main thing is we didn't hit any hazards. We've got a horrible downhill lie, but we are in the fairway. We can see the pin now. Looks like we don't want to go long, but there's no obstructions. So all things considered, we'll take that outcome. It's 119 meters to the front. We don't want to go long here. <laughs> okay, so do not want to blade this one. Uh, so I'm gonna take my pitching wedge, aim for the center of the green, and hopefully let's get it close. Just when you think the hole couldn't get any worse, eh? On the bright side, at least this is the hardest hole on the course. <laughs> um, I don't know if I've really shown you why it's the hardest hole, uh, other than just doing bad shots, but that's gonna happen. Uh, I was hoping that would be a little bit better, <laughs> not gonna lie. Uh, but let's hope we can uh, rescue ourselves with our short game here. Uh, a lot of green to work with. Uh, just gonna get it on the green hopefully two putt and that would be what so this is now our that was our fourth shot so fifth six seven so again we're kind of managing our expectations around the course now so par was out the window on that last shot we were going for double uh now we're going for essentially a triple which is fine it's fine we've got two pars which we banked early doors all right i'm going to take my 60 degree here hopefully land it at the start of the green Hoping you can see it all and then roll towards the pin. I don't want to go over. Already know that's gone long. God damn it. Oh, that is just, that's poor. That is poor. You know, but we're not playing well um, on this hole in particular. But we're going to get our head up and chip back up. Hopefully, I didn't go into the bunker over there, but that is shocking. I landed that so far long. All right, we're going to take our 52, our 60, and our putter. So we ended on a quad. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, so just to update you on that last hole, because uh, the camera was too hot so I couldn't record it. Went back to the six iron, hit that down the middle. <laughs> pin, and I did a one putt and in for bogey. Uh, so we're kind of back on track. Um, moving on to what is the first par five. Uh, again, so just because a par five doesn't mean you have to bring out your driver or your longest club. Again, hit a six iron, hit a seven iron, you've got a wedge shot in. Make the hole easier for yourself. All right, I'm gonna go six iron from here and let's see how we go. Okay, so change the high roads because it's a lot more open than what I thought it was. This is how it's done with the hybrid. That is not my ball, my ball's gone a little bit further. Let's <laughs> go find it. I've just found a Pro V1. Uh, same thing though, don't go for hitting your furthest club just to get as close to the green as possible. Hit your furthest glove which you're comfortable you're gonna not hit into a hazard. Uh, so for me, I'm thinking that's the six iron right now. Again, not pretty golf, but it's high handicap golf. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. So again, it shows the importance of finding the fairway instead of the rough, because the last couple of shots have been in the rough like this. And yeah, it's just not a nice shot to hit out of. It's a lot nicer to hit off something like this, where it's like that, perfect. Whereas uh, hitting the rough, so you know, if you're 20 meters back, but you're in the fairway, I would definitely say it'd be better to lose the distance and get yourself in the fairway. Because yeah, now I've hooked it into the rough to the left here, but should have like a pitching wedge or nine iron in. So let's see what we can do. Can I see the, the rough that we're in here? A uh, bit of wind with us, so I'm gonna take a light pitching wedge at this one. 
I actually think I'm going to hit 52 instead and come short rather than going long. Doesn't look like you want to go long here off the back. Uh, so I'm going to take my 52. If I pure it, I should hopefully get just to the front edge of the green. Uh, we've got a bit of wind with us, so it might carry that extra bit. And yeah, I couldn't see that because of the because uh, of the sun, uh, but saw it land, and I landed just on the front of the green. So again, that might actually be a green on reg. Uh, that is a green and reg. <laughs> it is obviously very short, but I think my pitching wedge would have possibly maybe bounced off the back. Uh, I've got a bit of a gap of issue between the 52 and the pitching wedge, and the soft pitching wedge can sometimes go horribly wrong. When you're green and reg, uh, and you've got a long putt like this. Where I was saying before, we want to obviously avoid the free putt. This is probably a scenario where it's okay to get a free putt. I'm miles away. <laughs> um, as long as I don't do anything ridiculous, like get a triple bogey from here, then I should be right. I'll try and put it up close, but it's uh, very long and it's slightly uphill as well. Oh, the greens are so dewy, this needs to be hit. Slow, 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 slow. It's up there. I think we actually kind of went off the back. <laughs> May have hit that a little too hard, but I wanted to get up the bank. I think you might have been able to see the water spray off it. Don't know what this angle is all about, but uh, just for speed of play. <laughs> did come off the back, but it's not the worst. Oh, dear. And that's why you need to practice your putting. You can save yourself. So. Avoided the hazards, like didn't want to go long, made sure I landed on the front of the green and then I actually did two putt for par. So again, that goes to show the importance of uh, really dialing yourself back in after a, <laughs> after a quad. So we've gone par, par, quad, bogey, par. <laughs> you know, it's a weird start to the round, but we'll, we'll take it, that's for certain. Going on to our first par three. So again, par threes, don't worry too much about pin placement, just try and get it onto the center of the green or just try and avoid the main hazards. That's what really trips you up on the par threes. It'd probably be like the last hole that I record. So it's a par three showing 130 meters to the front, 140 to the middle, 150 to the back. Big bunker to the left, one at the back and one to the right. So it's actually pretty safe to miss off to the left, um, but there's actually a load of green to the right. So I'm just gonna aim to the right of the pin, to the center of the green. I'm gonna take my nine iron because I'm hitting into the wind slightly. And as long as I hit it right, this should go pretty well. Thought the wind was harder, but you know, that's uh, that's gonna happen. And uh, we are in that back bunker where I said I didn't want to be. Now the wind picked up again, God damn it. Well, I mean, let's take the positives from that. And the positive was I hit it pretty pure, uh, just the wrong club. Let's always take the positives from it, hit it on the line that I was going for, uh, just hit it too sweet. <laughs> so considering how the first few holes are gone, that's not too bad. So not a shot that us high handicappers want to be doing by all means. Uh, it's a bunker going onto a downhill green. Again, all I want to do here is get out of the bunker. I'm not going to pretend that I can give tips on how to get out of the bunker very well. Um, but the mechanics, what I use that tends to work, hopefully works now, is get your highest lofted club. Uh, for me, that's my 60 degree. I open the face a little bit. <clears throat> and for me, the most important thing is point of entry just before the ball and exit just after the ball. Let's see if we can get this out. We got it out. Right, okay. Good thing is here we missed uh, just left of that other bunker. So that's why I aimed slightly to the left of the pin, just in the event I did what I did and rolled off the back. Uh, but now we have a little chip on. Uh, so it's gonna take 60 degree at this one and land it just hopefully just before the pin. Uh, Cause uphill green, so it shouldn't roll out too much. Go. Well, up close we do have a downhill putt though. Uh, <laughs> Puff bogey, we did show why you don't want to go in the hazard. Um, the one thing I said at the start of the hole, but you know, unfortunately we make mistakes. Oh. <laughs> Nearly rolled in, I thought it was gonna go. But again, we avoided the free putt, which is again, one of the main objectives of the day. 
Uh, that's going to keep our score down. Right, I'm going to play a few more holes and I'll catch up with you later or in another environment. This is a par five, now I've got a par putt here. Uh, did a good hybrid tee shot and then I was in the center of the fairway. I thought, you know what, I'll try the hybrid from the deck. Did not work well. <laughs> Hooked it to the left, uh, went into the rough and then had to take a six iron, which I just put to 70, uh, 70 meters. Um, but thankfully, because I'm quite good at that kind of range, I managed to get it close and I've got myself a one putt for par, but it's an easy two putt bogey is how we're going to look at it. Oh, just put it banked in more. Didn't go long, gave myself an easy two putt bogey. And that is what's going to really lower your scores and in turn lower your handicap and also make you happier as you go around the course. <laughs> kind of just wish I recorded that bogey, but uh, you yeah, had the short par three, a uh, lot of green to work with. I ended up kind of thinning my 52, bounced down here to the left where you don't want to miss. I was about 50 yards down there, hit the 60 degree, caught it real flush, cleared the green down to this side, 60 degree back up again to about like, what, maybe like 10 foot, but then one putt for bogey. So again, it just goes to show, get your putting good and uh, you know, you can make up for the errors that you make along the way. All right, so again, just a quick one for course management. As you can tell, it's obviously quite a big part in uh, scoring better for us high handicappers. I hooked my drive a little bit too much. I have a decent distance on like pitching wedge, but obviously that tree is gonna go in the way. Chance that I missed that tree just to the right, more likely I hit it. Uh, so I'm gonna just play a softer eight iron and just try and keep it low and bump it up there. <laughs> if in doubt, punch it out, as I say. Caught up a little bit in the rough, but uh, again, missed the tree. Let's just see if I did go through it with the pitching wedge if I got through. Actually didn't get high enough though. <laughs> Would have been the better shot, but uh, statistically probably it was better to do the other way. The pitching wedge did actually go just to the left of that bunker and uh, nestled just off the fringe. <clears throat> right now we have a little chip here but there's no hazards in front of us. So 52, just land it, uh, just land it just before the green and it should hopefully roll on. Oh, that had a horrible bounce. Landed it pretty much where I wanted to, uh, just call on the fringe. Just want to eliminate the free putt here, sorry. Putting is on absolute fire today. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Oh dear. Uh, but again, avoid the hazards. You're gonna score well and uh, get better and that's why it's just important practice your putting. It's so important for getting your handicap down. Double bogey on the second hardest hole. Uh, followed up by a bogey which I nearly sunk the par part. It was a little bit too much. Actually did a good shot out of the bunker, which was nice. Now we went onto this par five and I hit my best tee shot of the day with the hybrid. Again, the shape's just going well now. So aiming off to the right, just missed the top of that tree. And then, uh, yeah, drew into the uh, right side of the fairway. So again, the key is to adapt to how you are playing on the day, as well as just playing how you play. So off, more often than not, people have certain shot shapes so if you're you know a slice slash fader or draw slash hooker factor that in for when you're taking your shot so you know the hazard is way away from that direction and hopefully you avoid that and hit more fairways because again if you can hit more fairways you're going to lower your score i think more so than uh green and reg i think green and reg is more important for when you're trying to get lower than like say 15 handicap because at the moment instead of aiming for like green and reg what we want to do is just avoid hazards and be close to the green so again big course management here there's two trees so i don't want to hit either of those it's like 230 meters to the green so i'm not going to try and go for it i'm just going to hit an eight iron give myself a wedge in and uh hopefully we do all right And again, the reason I went with the eight iron instead of like a six iron is my six irons now become a little bit too hooky drawy. So my eight iron is a bit more of a comfortable club. I wanna like build up a bit more confidence with iron striking uh, to finish out the round. 
Uh, so yeah, it's, it's all good to do that through the round as well. If you're not playing certain shots well, put them away for a little bit. Build up your confidence with clubs you know you hit a lot cleaner. Like that was one of the cleaner strikes I hit today. I did uh, push it a bit to the left, but you know, it was a cleaner strike than some of the other clubs I've hit today. Uh, one rule which I kind of made up for myself, which has uh, made me do pretty good in terms of damaging the rage control, is uh, if you hit a shot, so say for example, you're trying to hit a long shot, so you know, you try your free wood, but you top it like 10 meters. So essentially the distance is still free wood distance. Instead of going for it again, I take my club back, put it in the bag, select a different club. <laughs> uh, so not only do you just have a little reset, but also the chances are you're gonna rush that next shot and you're gonna get more frustrated and you're gonna do exactly the same thing again. Or <laughs> you do the hero shot and you're like, wow, glad I did that. But for us high handicappers, it's always better to play the percentages. Oh, and then finally, kind of have a free strike policy. So if one club does me over three times, <laughs> uh, I put it away for the rest of the round. So that tends to be the driver <laughs> more often than not. Do have a clean shot at the pin. Uh, nice little wedge shot in. Uh, hopefully we get it close. So again, I'm just gonna take a 52. Again, I went left, center, and it's on the green. So again, like make it as simple as you possibly can. So that for me, that bar five was hybrid eight iron 52 and not even like a full 52, uh, but it's a shot which I'm pretty comfortable hitting. Uh, so more often than not on a par five, I'll try and lay up that way instead of going, you know, like driver or hybrid into like a hybrid or like a four iron to try and get to the green in two. Because realistically, I'm not gonna be able to do it. <laughs> Oh yeah, let's try and two putt. But again, green and reg, three putt, not the end of the world. There we go. <laughs> and just like that, another par to add to the collection for the day. I've not touched my driver all day. Uh, one of the other reasons for that is I actually got a bit of a shoulder injury, so hitting up on the ball is actually uh, what I'm currently uh, currently seeing the physio about that. So you know you got to play to your limitations as well. And it's another tap in bogey. So again, if we can give ourselves pretty much tap in bogeys all the way through, uh, you're actually going to break 90, which is where a lot of people fail to realise how important it is to just play for like a bogey or a double instead of always trying to get par. Like the amount of high handicap golfers, which are just frustrated they didn't get a par or a birdie is mental. Like the percentage of you getting a birdie, something like one in every five rounds for like someone who's pretty good. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, one in a fair few for a high handicap. So don't be disappointed with not getting pars or birdies and just continuous improvement. Thought just in case, uh, you never know. <laughs> Well, just in case you get a hole in one, actually pushed off to the right. Since we've got the camera set up, let's just do one more. Oh. One other major thing which really helped me lower my handicap was practicing on the course. Uh, so if you can, like I just have there, you know, taking that second shot at something, and as you can see, I put it close to the pin. Um, but it's actually more so like practicing the shots, not really from the tee so much. That was just because I thought, who knows, I might get a hole in one. But it's more for like practicing shots, like the second shot out of the rough and all that kind of stuff. Um, but do it only if you can do it and it doesn't impact like others, like speed of play and stuff like that. So for me today, I came into this lovely course, like again, a nice countryside course. And I came early, first tea, first tea of the day, 7 a.m. And I was out here first and then I, no one behind me, no one with me. You know, I can take time to record, explain a few things, not alter anyone else's speed of play. So I did that quite a lot when I was uh, practicing because practicing on the range is just, it can only be so far. I can't emulate like the, the lies, like having thick rough, having like a tight lie like that one, going over a lump, even like just landing it on a green and seeing it roll out or landing it on the fairway, seeing it roll out, uh, opposed to landing in the rough. It's just a huge help. So if you can, 
uh, you know, go book around uh, somewhere slightly further away or a quieter time, get up, get out early and just do a practice round. Don't even score, like, you know, take two, three balls and not every shot, obviously, but every so often drop another ball, hit a second shot. So, you know, when you're thinking about, oh, should I hit the, the 230 meter hero shot? Instead, first hit like a six iron give you confidence get it in and then maybe take another ball and hit your free wood so you learn how to hit it yeah that just helped me loads to really uh dip my handicap because i didn't have as much time to go practice every day at like a practice facility so when i got to the chance to play golf i would go out early and have a practice whilst i was playing and when you do practice or just going around make sure to repair your pitch marks or your divots whatever you want to call it and yeah that's the the shot I would have had. Let's see if I can put it with my feet. It's actually not the worst effort. Oh, yeah. Now, a simple thing to do is clean your clubs as you go around. I don't even always do that, but it does definitely help having clean grooves. It's going to take 60 degree, just land it over this bank onto the little bit of the downhill of the green, and it should roll towards the pin, uh, just slightly to the right. Came short, got scared of it. It's all right, it's on the green. So again, like I said, practice on the course when you can. Oh, that actually gripped up way more anyway. Didn't hit either of those how I wanted to, but you know, we're on the green again, <laughs> didn't duff it. Uh, now we've got a long putt for par. But yeah, like really shows the importance of that like ladder drill at the start of the round. So yeah, if you're like me and you end up rushing to tea times, I mean like most of us, let's be honest, it's never <laughs> getting there 30 minutes, have like warm up balls. It's always you turn up like five minutes before when you're rushing to the tea box. Um, but even if you just have like five minutes, if you can drop like three balls and hit a couple of putts uh, like that, I do like the ladder drill towards a hole. So I'm still like aiming at a hole as you would have seen earlier. Um, and that really helps you gauge the pace of the greens and that should give you the best opportunity at scoring well and I did a 50 meter uh, 50 meter 52 shot which landed just on there and there we are we've rolled up next to the pin and this is our first real chance at birdie today and we don't get many birdie opportunities but what that really is is an easy two putt par which is what we're all about for lowering our handicap you will hear a lot of people say, oh, don't leave a birdie putt short and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but if you're not a very good putter and you often go long of the pin, then just try and secure the two putt par. Um, I'm going to hopefully just drop it in for a bird, but you know, if not, it should be a nice tapping par. Oh, come on. Give it a chance, just... Uh... Just slowed up, but again, nice tapping par, and we'll take that all day. All right, so final big tip for me on the round is try to avoid counting your score religiously all the time. Uh, if possible, try to avoid the score. So I actually don't know what I've scored today. Uh, about to find out. I think I've scored pretty well because I obviously made some really nice putts, uh, but it just takes that extra pressure. The amount of times when you're on for a good score and then all of a sudden you crumble. Uh, this last hole, uh, it had the road going to the left and because I've been hooking the tee shot I just aim right <laughs> the one time it just goes dead straight blocked out by that tree so then I punched into the middle made sure I didn't hit the tree which is the main thing didn't get the best of punches but I didn't hit the tree now I'm left with about 100 meters uh, to the center of the green so I'm going to take my 52 at this and uh, hopefully put it close Center of the green to finish, two putt bogey. Uh, let's see if we can get it done. Possibly the most important thing about golf uh, for high handicap people that can only play like once a week, maybe like miss out once in a month. So you're playing like two to three times a month. You know, the main thing is to have fun. If you're not having fun, then why bother, man? Like spending like what four to five hours out of your day. Uh, you know, make sure you have fun first and foremost and then trying to improve, don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, manage your expectations. 
course manage according to how you play the game and to your strengths and if that means not hitting the driver then don't hit the driver if that means hitting the driver every shot hit the driver if that means chipping off chipping from the fringe or chipping from just off the green chip if it means putting putt it's all about playing to the best of your ability i've actually come a little bit longer than i thought but you know let's see if we can uh putt this one in And that's how it's done, and that's how you're going to half your handicap in, you know, uh, the first season, six to eight months of golf. <laughs> Results may vary, um, but that, that worked for me. Hopefully it works for you guys. Uh, let me know how you go. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want more of these videos, and if you hit that subscribe button, I will certainly make more of these videos. And uh, yeah, let me know how your game's going, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, let's find out what I scored first. I'll enter it in now. There you go. 90 for a course which I um, haven't played before I will take that uh, uh, within that we started off par par which is outrageous and then we got that quad which cost us and we got a double where did we get a double so we got one quad one double two doubles three doubles and then just some really solid bogey golf uh, unlucky a couple of those didn't drop sooner but um, yeah so that was 90 for me and I will take that for today. Thank <laughs> you.